Hi, my name is Lakshmi Devi. I am the director and the actress and the screenwriter of the film When the Music Changes. And you're watching FaceTime with Chad Gordon. Well, it's back to school. And you know what that means. Grumpy old men, back to school tweets. Ah, uh, peace and quiet. Wait, who's going to clean my bedpan and change my diaper? Son of a bitch. <laughs> I don't care if this is mean or not. After three years straight with them, when they come home from school, I'm telling my grandkids from behind my bedroom door that I have COVID and to leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> school is back, yes. Because if I have to listen to one more cry, whiny complaints about nothing, I'm going to take my handicap ass out of the wheelchair and stick my ass <laughs> <getting away. laughs> Thank God that my grandson is back to school. For three years, he was playing hide and seek with my dentures. So I put a blue pill in his fruity pebbles for now. That little bass is gonna be hard to <laughs> Did something funny happen? Yeah. You'd never know it. <laughs> we'll be right back with Lots of Debbie. Welcome back to the show, everyone. So my guest tonight is a doctor turned actor, filmmaker, screenwriter, and producer. She right now has a short film called When the Music Changed that is taking over all the short film festivals, many awards. And on top of that, she was able to link up with none other than Emmy Award winning actor, John Tutoro. But you know what? Don't take it from me. Let's look at a clip. India's really got to do something about their recycling, man. This is just embarrassing at this point. We need to learn how to reuse plastic. There's so much of garbage on the road. This is why I'm making the documentary, so that it creates a certain amount of awareness, so that people stop doing this. This is disgusting, okay? That's what it is. Why do you keep calling him? Maybe he'll just surprise me and decide to pick up the phone one day. You know he doesn't treat you well, right? He has all these rules in his head. What are you doing? What do you fucking talk about is sex. He's unaware. He's not that bad. All you needed to do was pick up the phone. Here I am, here I am, trying to make things beautiful. I've no time, have no time, cause my hands are just that full. He knew he loves me. Please welcome to the show, Lakshmi Devi. Lakshmi, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's honestly, it's my honor to have you. Um, I did a lot of research on you. First of all, before we get into it, I want to give kudos to your team, uh, Rick mm -hmm. Gomez and Amy Prenner. Mm -hmm. uh, really great people. And we know mm -hmm. how hard it is to find great representation, but also great people that you can get a drink with. So <laughs> kudos on you for linking up with them. I think that's awesome, man. Thank you, guys. Yes, I'm giving you guys props <laughs> right now. Um, I watched your film <laughs> twice, and I'm saying that right off the bat, but I want people okay. to understand a little more about you. Um, you uh, started out, you know, you grew up in New York City, uh, Indian background, obviously, Indian descent. But you're a doctor, and <laughs> most people when they leave a profession in medical, um, usually there's a cliff involved, like what are you doing, <laughs> you know, going <laughs> off the cliff. But you found your passion and you were a kid and I think your passion was the arts, but obviously growing up in American society, you know, making money is a huge thing. I mean, living in New York alone, you know, you gotta make some money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What was the moment that you decided Mm -hmm. You know what? I love the medical field, but I'm absolutely in love with the movies and I want to become a filmmaker. What was that moment that you decided this is where I want to turn my life into mm -hmm. my dream and what I want to do? 
I didn't actually have one of those aha sort of moments. It was really gradual. Uh, I was actually raised in between India and the United States. Right. Uh, I have done a lot of schooling. I've done a little bit in uh, in New York and most of it actually back in India. I went to medical college in India, actually. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was when I had just gotten into medical school that I kept getting these modeling offers. And I finally decided to pick up one of them and modeling became uh, acting and mm-hmm. acting turned into writing uh, after I became a screenwriter then I became a director and producer so it was kind of that sort of very slow organic sort of thing but by the time I graduated med school I knew that all I wanted to do was film you know so it was a you know it was a huge decision to kind of make that one decision yeah but I what? didn't know that movie, <laughs> movies was an, was an actual actual job I had I had no idea yeah. uh, it was a magical thing that I went to the theater to watch. I always enjoyed it. And so did my family, mm-hmm. but you know, everyone is either a doctor an engineer or a teacher a lawyer, yeah. something along those lines. That's right. Um, so I, I didn't know anything. I didn't know enough. Um, I didn't, I don't think I was exposed to any of this enough. And so when I kind of realized like I had to be true and honest to myself, you yes. know, and I realized that, you know what, I'm the arts girl, not the science girl. I mean, I love science. I love medicine. I love being a doctor, but mm-hmm. films is pretty much where I belong. So how did you <laughs> it was a very really slow turn. Oh, it's a very slow <laughs> turn. But when you, when you decided to do that, how did your family react? Were they all for it or were they like, all right, no. Oh, well, you're going to pay us back <laughs> <or> that money. <laughs> no, I mean, they didn't do anything like that. But then they were really concerned because I was, here I was going from, you know, really good stability into an area of uh, work where they had no idea about. They couldn't really help me. They wouldn't be able to guide me. Like with medicine, like my mom's a doctor, you know, and mm. she would be able to help and guide me. And, you know, there would be so much of support from that side. But when I, you know, got into films, all of a sudden you're like this lone child and they don't know what to do, what to say, how to help. And yeah. so I think, uh, you know, they were taken by surprise. I don't think they really liked it in the beginning. But I also know that I think now I can say probably all of their angst came out of feeling helpless because mm-hmm. they just didn't know how to help you, you know. Yeah. And now, of course, it's different. They are so proud of me. They are, you know, they're, uh, you know, there's no question about what I do, you know, what kind of films, any, anything like that. You know, they're really supportive now. But it's been a journey for the entire family. <laughs> yeah, I, and let me tell yeah. you something. It's great. And I think one of the reasons why you're so successful right now and you just get to get bigger is you didn't really have anybody that could really – point you in the right directions and i've always found even with me because my brother used to tell me hey i want to help you but you can just look it up and learn it yourself you know if you don't know a word look up the meaning of it like if you ever read an attorney contract it reads like japanese it's like who the hell wrote this but if you actually look up the phrases it's like well why didn't you guys just say that <laughs> like, it's i think that's one of the reasons why you're really successful right now and so good at what you do is because I think you Thank have to you. learn everything on your own. Oh, no, I'm going to give you kudos. I'm going to make you cry. <laughs> you. you made me cry twice in this film, and I hate you for it because I don't cry, okay? You don't cry. And, um, but before we get to that film, uh, mm-hmm. let's touch base just real quick on your first film, which is mm-hmm. Darren Matt, and it's yeah. Don't Be Afraid. And I believe it's about a young girl who – you know, it was living in India and it was yeah. just going through what the trials and tribulations are as a young kid growing up. Yeah. Now, was this pretty much like a mirror image of your life as you started growing up? Um, uh, it was uh, like a whole combination of a lot of stories or basically a, a kind of character that I saw within women who had surrounded me more than, uh, you know, more than right. it being about me, just about me. Right. Like when I went to med school, I was surrounded by all of these girls who they were brilliant. They were so good at their work. They were really, really smart 
girls, you know, academically excellent, but there was always that, you know, you would always hear things like, you know, uh, you know, I have to take this, I have to take a non-clinical subject because my husband's going to be a clinician or, yeah. you know, I have to do this for the family or something like that. It's as if somehow the other, you know, um, there's a large portion of society that is raised without actually asking for an opinion. Like, mm -hmm. even if we're given everything, we're not really asked for an opinion. Right. You know, the, there's, certain, uh, there's a certain framework that's kind of set and we kind of have to make sure that we kind of fit into that. Mm -hmm. So Daromat was actually about that, you know, about, you know, what if one day one person just comes and treats you like an actual human being with an actual opinion? you know, and just gives you that strength, you know, it doesn't take away from the fact that she's smart and she wants to do anything. But I think even in the film, you know, she's scared because this person's a stranger mm -hmm. uh, and he, she's married. And all of a sudden, like, if your husband goes missing, what are you supposed to feel? You've been right. married for a day or two. You don't know him. Mm -hmm. You can't find him. Right. Well, you know, what are you, what exactly are you supposed to feel? Like how, uh, you know, like uh, the, it's such a, a raw, honest, turbulent sort of level of emotions. And I kind of wanted to kind of explore that whole thing of, you know, one person, it's kind of an ode of a love story. She goes yeah. to fight the exam, not only because she wants to, because it's her form of love. The one thing that that man told her was to write the exam. So at that point of time, the only thing that she thought of was, I must go and write my exam because, you know, he told me to, because that was her form of love, mm -hmm. you know, and of her own self, you know, yep. she, I think for the first time in her life, she was being bold enough. So it was, these are kind of uh, pointers that I pick up from the people surrounding me. You know, mm -hmm. I kind of look at, you know, they have so much going on, but there's always these smaller pockets, you know, that I tend to find, you know, to be very interesting when I write characters. Yeah, I love it. I, you're pretty much like, I mean, if you can dance, uh, I'm assuming you could sing also because I can kind of hear your voice. Um, if you can dance, you're like a triple threat. So look out Hollywood. That's all I have to say about that. Can you I dance? can dance, actually. I, I yeah, can but dance. I, yeah, actually, I, can I, think I, I think I know that because I'm going to ask you to pronounce it. That's why I'm leading into that because I know you can dance. There's a, you have a dancing style that starts with a B, but I'm going to be honest yeah. with you, I'm not, I'm not going to say it because after five letters, I'm kind of done with words. So. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to pronounce it if you're not, especially if you're not used to it. It's called Padvanagra, which is hard to pronounce even if I tell you, yeah, you know, it's okay. Yeah, it's I'm, classical I'm Indian you, dance. Yeah, I'm not calling that. I'm calling you a B girl. <laughs> that, that's the name. She's a B girl dancer, everybody. Um, you can look up the rest. It's a lot better to have the dancer. How does it not give? Yes. <laughs> See, what she said. That's what it is. <laughs> I agree. Thank you for um, clarifying that. I'm going to put the b-ball drop when we edit this thing later. Like what that means. Um, okay. I probably will, too. <laughs> um, <laughs> which is great. Uh, do you still do that type of dancing? Or is this more yes, like... Yes, I do. Oh really? no no I I still do whenever I can I I've uh, I'm a trained classical dancer but then apart from that I do a lot of Bollywood dancing Western forms the whole thing I uh, I think uh, my entire interest towards the arts kind of started from dance and drama basically I've been on stage from a very young age and yeah. I guess that was my form of learning yeah and I, I love how you know multi talented you are now let's jump into this film. Um, I want people to get the little know about your background, New York City, India, mm -hmm. medical, screenwriter, producer, writer, <laughs> actress, editor, award winner. But now let's really get into the film that's really taken the world by storm. Because first of all, your past film, congrats, is over 3 million views. Thank but you. this film, um, I'll be honest with you, I told you I watched it twice. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even look like a film. I felt like even though your character went to India to deal with an abusive relationship, and we're going to get into that, by the way, because <laughs> I deal with that crap with people all the time. <laughs> so you, you're trying to help out the world, talking about you know how to recycle and how to make the world a better place, which is awesome. But the acting, the storyline, I thought that it was real. That's how good it was. I really thought it was real. 
at one point. I mean, the fighting, yeah, they could have done a little better with beating the heck out of each other. <laughs> I, I, I did that on purpose, actually, if you want to really I, know. I, I, so I'm I always you said that. that. Whenever, yeah, whenever I watch these action films, I'm like, as much as I love watching them, don't get me wrong, you know, there's nothing yeah. better than a really good fight scene. But to be honest, when you see men beating up each other, that's not what it looks like. No. It's a lot of raw shoving and pulling and, you know, very uncoordinated very messy, just a lot of talk and this and pulling on your shirt and grabbing yes. your hair, you know? So that's what you see in the film, the glamorized actual version of what it looks like when most <laughs> men fight, most normal looking, non, you know, really macho, no one who looks like The Rock, you know, exactly. not staged. This is pretty much what it looks like. And I've I seen my it. fair share of men fighting. This is what it looks like. It's not all, oh, yeah, 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 no, it's not. It really isn't. I am so glad you literally just <laughs> caught on to what I was saying because you flowed right into it. Like, yeah, we're on the same page. Because, listen, I'm Italian, right? So I've seen a lot mm -hmm. of fights. And mm -hmm. all that that you showed, yeah, that's the way guys kind of really fight. Most guys out there, they do a lot of windmills. <laughs> And they're, they're or they kind of stand like really close each to other. each other. Yeah. Acting, yeah, they just stand so close to each other, and then they keep lifting up their chin and saying bad words, you know, as in, like kind of challenging each other. But no one actually, you know, throws a punch. But then they're just like up in each other's face. Oh my god, it's horrible. I mean, honestly, guys, you know what you all look like? You look like a bunch of chickens just trying to figure out why am I here? And it's just like a lot of dodging, a lot of flying around. Where women are just like this. Drop the purse. <laughs> women, if they, yeah, if they decide to fight, then they actually fight. Yeah, you know? they get but it on. This, yeah, this is, a, this is a lot of, you know, the majority that I've seen, even when they are, I mean, they may hit you with whatever they have in hand, but nothing is as beautiful like, like you, like the kind of stuff that we see on TV or films. You know, it's not coordinated. You know, they don't look good throwing a punch. It, I haven't, I barely seen that. I've seen a few good punches, but yeah. most of the time it's just a lot of, you know, pulling and pushing and shoving. Yeah, it always <laughs> is. Like, Which I is what you see in the film. <laughs> yeah, and it was awesome. When I was watching this, I'm like, did she do that on purpose? Because... <laughs> <laughs> and and I love it, and I think the best part about it was the whole part of that scene was is that, um, which is really rare, the cops just happen to be there at the same time. That's that's fiction right there. <laughs> and uh, no, actually, so what happens is uh, there, there's a timeline for the film. So what happens is the moment she goes to the hospital, right, and you know she goes there and she she says point that I've been great. So whenever you go to the hospital and the, while the doctor checks you immediately at the same time, you have the police come in. Of course. So everyone knows in this thing. So, you know, while she does give everything, the same night as soon as she comes back home, you have the police force already kind of coming together uh, almost at the same yeah. time. Yeah. You, know, you know why I was confused? You, yeah. you probably did that on purpose because you didn't mm -hmm. show the escort bringing them to the door. No, 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 I didn't take it. Yeah, would do yeah, that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah, you for playing yeah. out. See, <laughs> that was, that's why I'm like, I'll, I'm getting into this with her. Yeah. Um, the scene, the whole mm -hmm. plot itself, apparently you, you were telling how this happens a lot in mm -hmm. India. And it's just not in India. It's mm -hmm. all over the world. Mm -hmm. But for you, it's a little more personal because I have a feeling you had friends that went through this. Because, or... Yes. You saw a story, and we don't have to get into that, but mm -hmm. some of the greatest stories written are based mm -hmm. on trauma that they've either experienced or they mm -hmm. were around, mm -hmm. and they wanted to send that message out to the world that this happens every day. It's not like your social media where everybody's mm -hmm. becoming a TikTok star. There are actually real serious crime out there. Um, so we're going to get into a, a few things. Um, I love how, like I said, you, you came out there uh, you would build in a documentary about saving the world, also dealing with the long distance relationship because women being abused by men, physical or mental, happens every day in probably at least 70% of relationships and not as much physical, but there is a lot of physical and a lot of relationship. It's mental because guys treat women like shit. Mm -hmm. And I'm throwing that out there because I'm actually a good guy. I was raised by my mom. She raised me correctly. 
I, a lot of times, had a hard time meeting good women because they've been through so much drama with other men. Men have to realize there's a reason why there's a trust issue with you. It's got mm -hmm. nothing to do with you. It has mm -hmm. to do with the tour of her life that got to you. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about the thought process of putting something like this together. Was it a hard concept or you're like, I need to do this perfect? How did that go for you when you were putting this together? Um, so there were several aspects to it. Basically, I kind of, I knew that this was a story that needed to be, needed to be told, but I needed to know what all I, I had to include in it. So yeah. I wanted people to see the narcissistic boyfriend, you right. know, how, even though he's not physically abusive, how, you know, he, you can get screwed over so badly just with that and not realizing, you know, right. you can be as smart as you can. You can have a good paying job, be really academically inclined, but that won't stop you from being abused by a narcissistic partner, right. you know. And on the other side, there is a concept of physical abuse. And, you know, when you come to, you know, the aspects of rape and all of that, when it's... <clears throat> You know, there's a whole short list that people will make. Like if you dress like this or if you talk in a particular way or if you conduct yourself in a particular way, then you can probably avoid any of this happening to you, which, you know, after you finish growing up, you kind of realize is hogwash. There's mm -hmm. no particular way that you can speak, that in, you know, that will stop a racist. It doesn't matter what you wear. You know, uh, there are instances, multiple instances of children being abused, babies being raped babies one and a half a month old baby so when anyone attributes rape to how someone speaks or dresses that itself kind of marks the ridiculousness with it when children are being targeted at the same time right. they sexualize yeah. children too and cool. that was one thing that kind of uh, really kind of stirred on uh, my necessity to be able to talk about you know the so-called cause for rape it can be as simple like if we take in history whenever there's a war and and if one a party conquers the other party, the next biggest thing that they do if they have to affect the conquered region is they make sure that they loot the region and they rape the women. Right. You know, this is part of history. This is something that has always been done. You want to hurt another man? What do you do? You hurt his woman. Right. Exactly. So now, 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 yeah, that's the like you hurt his mother, his daughter, or his wife, or his girlfriend, or his sister, and so on and so forth. It's like almost you know women are treated as objects in the name of either taking care of them or hurting them. So especially in this story, uh, I wanted to portray like a, a girl who had nothing to do with the other section of men. She wasn't dressed in any kind of provocative way. She wasn't asking for it in any particular way, but she gets caught in between a silly, silly, silly kind of altercation between and it was so stupid. Men. Yeah, I love the way you so wrote. stupid. Just so, so stupid. stupid. And that stupid. happens every day. That's the thing. That's what I wanted to show because usually yeah. whenever you see uh, most of the films, you know, the, the core reason for the anger and the fight and all, it, you know, it's heavy, you know, and it's pertinent and it's logical. But most of the time, that's not what happens. You know, you see these kind of gang fights for no reason. It's the most dumbest, you know, explanation that they can have, but they feel so strongly about it. And I feel like women get caught in the crossfire all the time. Mm -hmm. So... I wanted the film to talk about all of that and showcase that there is no particular reason as to why you get raped. You know, it's not on you. It's not because of the person, uh, you know, it is, a, what do you say? It's a shameful part of the society. Yeah, it's, it's a hard. shame on the person who does it or the people who do it, you know, and also the concept of honor, you know, if something like that does happen to you, the whole other chapter in your life becomes, you know, you become a victim after that. And your entire life is defined by that. Yeah. You know? And I love how you flipped it on him where in the end, I, I believe it was your sister or your friend. I yeah. forgot the yeah. character pretty much said mm -hmm. it was your fault. Yeah. All this is your fault. Yeah. You yeah. embarrass those guys because mm -hmm. when guys act like that mm -hmm. for absolutely no reason, and I'll, and I'll mm -hmm. curse right now, if a guy acts mm -hmm. like an asshole constantly, mm -hmm. it's because he's insecure and he feels like yeah. acting like a tough guy is going yeah. to make him stand out and impress because the yeah. one thing I loved about the character that that mm -hmm. the guy played was he kept saying, they don't know who I am, they don't know who yeah. I am. And yeah. it's like, you know what, bro? I don't think you know who you are either. You're just a mm -hmm. random dude that has this beautiful, amazing girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And you're mm -hmm. treating her like shit because you 
pretty much have nothing in your life going for you except mm -hmm. being a jerk. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. him being a jerk, and I believe he did care about you, but he's mm -hmm. such a jerk. I don't need, even know how he knew how to express it. And when he mm -hmm. realized he lost you, mm -hmm. he was crying. But at the same time, your character is like, no, you did this for your ego. You're not doing this to help me. Because that, yes. that whole thing, he never said, <laughs> how are you? He yeah, exactly. Asked. Yes. Yes. I, I was it. very particular about that. I, I wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, um, I, to write a narcissist kind of properly is can get a little tricky and the actor who played who played it uh, Adit Tarun, he did such a wonderful job oh my job. god he killed he did it such a wonderful job didn't you just want to really slap did. him when they said I, know. Like, I hate I, you <laughs> i mean anyone who watches the film just gets so peeved out by him because of his performance he was so good he was so good at it and you know he found that really that really you know thin line uh, to perform on and he did such a wonderful job and uh, with uh, the whole thing is like when even when I blame him like my logical mind knows that you know I can't blame him completely for some other man's actions but at the same time the whole point was why didn't you pick up the phone I kept yeah. calling you why didn't you pick up the phone it was the story from the very beginning yeah and how for him it's like uh, he feels bad because his girlfriend has been attacked so it's a personal attack on him. Right. It's not as if, you know, am I okay? Am I in pain? Am I yeah. this thing? You know, he, his whole, he goes into savior mode. and He's like, I can, you know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, be I'm with you. Avenge he, your honor. Yeah, yeah, sort of thing, you know. And but that's where she kind of puts the kabash on things. Like where she gets so tired of the amazing amount of bullshit. You know, she kind of calls him out on it. But yeah, I had wonderful actors. Even uh, even uh, like uh, the main, um, what do you say, uh, so-called villain. His name is Naveen. Mm -hmm. I and him go way back. We used to do theater back in the day together. And you know, <clears throat> he actually made it, it uh, my life a little bit more easier with regards to actually shooting such a hardcore scene. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, the the entire thing was shot in one single shot. Of wait, course, wait, I use wait, it. wait, wait! You did that in one <laughs> shot. Yeah, that entire thing was shot as one single shot. We did it twice. We shot it of the every, every time from the entry to the exit was one shot. So every single thing had to be choreographed accordingly, you know. And so if, imagine, like my cinematographer Abhinandan Ramanujam, he uh, did such a brilliant job. And then you know, my uh, what do you say? My sound designer was wonderful. And then remember, there are five rapists. So right. everybody, every angle, lights, reflections, <laughs> it's a whole aspect, you know, it's very exhausting physically too, you know, so I managed mm -hmm. to do it twice, but then after that I was kind of zonked out, I, I couldn't, uh, you know, pull it off again, but yeah. I mean, kudos to you and everybody that did the rape scene, because mm -hmm. there was part of me that wanted to shut it off, because just seeing a good person, and I think... I mean, you guys sold it so good, but I think the best part about that whole scene, and I can't believe I'm saying, hey, the best part about a rape scene, it's, it was awesome. Um, no, but the best part about the scene, and unfortunately, mm -hmm. women go through so much trauma with men, it takes a tragic scene for you to break up with a guy, because we all do it, right, men and women, is that we get insecure in our relationship. We feel like we can't do any better. So we stick with what we have because we're afraid mm -hmm. to be alone and go out there and try something new because this person damaged us so mentally that mm -hmm. we can't move forth. Your character <laughs> moved forth with one part in that scene. When your cameraman mm -hmm. showed your boyfriend watching the game while you're being raped, those are supposed to be your eyes looking at yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. when your character broke up with and I think every woman that watched that film mm -hmm. prays they never have to go through something like yeah. that. God, he blows you off because he's watching a game that you can yeah. easily watch. It, it, was, it was this, uh, the whole story idea actually started off because of that simple thought. It's, why don't you pick up the phone? That's kind of where the entire story actually began. Right. Uh, you know, and that's how I even started writing. And what happens if someone who's with you, like your boyfriend or your husband, has a habit of not picking up the phone, and the worst thing that can happen to you happens, and he doesn't answer the phone. 
you know and so when i when i wrote and when i designed the scene also it was really important for me you know for us to kind of Uh, you know, for the audience to kind of see that he is willingly making sure that he doesn't answer the phone and that, you know, he's, you know, just busy watching a game and it's all supposed to be okay, no matter how many times she calls, you know, and I'm also pushing it into the sound design, you know, making sure that we had the, the voicemail going on with the ringing and her screaming and the, you know, it was... Um, it was a process that I did really enjoy, to be honest, you know, it was a challenge and, you know, I, this is a film that's very special to me at the end of the day. Yeah, you killed it. And I loved how you added little elements of it when you were walking through the wall in the hospital, yeah. you were playing a distorted version of yeah. you know, It's a Beautiful yeah. World yeah. Yeah. Um, because that's where your brain was. And, you know, mm -hmm. I think the best little idea that you came up with, and I mm -hmm. think you came up with this, I love when it went flatline. Yeah, yeah. And it yeah, wasn't meaning yeah. that you died. It meant your soul died at that point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you were staring in space. Mm -hmm. And um, congratulations. It was such a great Thank movie. You. And Thank first of all, you got a gold Remy Award, okay? Which is <laughs> crazy. I mean, you're literally in the same ballpark <laughs> as Steven Spielberg and the Coen <laughs> Brothers and Ang Lee and... These are guys that worked hard to get those awards, and you did as well. And now you're in that realm with these guys, like you're the <laughs> one with Star Wars and ET. And like, that that's insane, right? Thank so, you, thank you, I appreciate that, it. Thank you. Yeah, I love that. I love that because you have such a huge following in India. And now you're developing a big following here in the U.S. Um, I don't even see an international film award. This thing, if it was another 10 minutes, you should be up for an Oscar. Be straight up. I mean, let's I'm really kidding. I know. I love, but you know, hopefully with the next one or the one after that. Hopefully. Uh, you know what you do? Just extend the rape scene for another 10 minutes and make it a joke. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just put a dancing popcorn along the screen like this means 10 minutes. Make sure you can go get your sodas, why? Because when you come back, they're still going at it. <laughs> like you can have three other people come into the room and just hook up. But um talking about hooking up, how did you connect with John Tutaro? I mean, uh um uh, so uh once I had <clears throat> finished the film, um uh I was kind of, you know, of course doing the festival route is my favorite thing in the world. Uh unfortunately COVID had hit, so I didn't I personally couldn't go to a lot of festivals like I had done <clears throat> with my previous film. Right. But with John, he was so wonderful. I had approached him. Uh, you know, we have a, a common friend and I had approached him uh, through him. And, you know, I just said, you know, watch the film and, uh, you know, tell me what you think. And, you know, if you'd be interested uh, in collaborating and he watched the film and, uh, you know, he had such wonderful things to say. He wrote me a glorious review and he came on board as an executive producer lending his name because he said that it was an important topic, you know, so it's wonderful. I, I have to say thank you to his, uh, his cousin, Summer, who, who is the one who kind of helped me actually uh, reach John, you know, and yeah. I think both Summer and John have been really, really, uh, what do you say, supportive in this entire process. I'm really grateful for them. Oh, it's it's, it's amazing. Um, are you guys looking to do the film circuits here in New York City? I mean, you're doing a lot, but this mm -hmm. film needs to be in Tribeca, hands down. I mean, I know, I know. Of the top, <laughs> yeah, that and Keynes, yeah, but. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you tell John, tell him, Todd, it's like, hey, man, get this thing into <laughs> Tribeca because I think it's an amazing film. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm actually I, looking into, we did the, the, an entire route already, so I'm actually looking into streaming services at this point. The film is now available on iTunes and uh, Google Play and mm -hmm. YouTube movies. And uh, hopefully it should be on, uh, what do you say, an SVOD streaming service pretty soon. Yeah, and you are right in my head. So thank you for plugging out because I was about to say that I'm like, I like this girl. She's like right there with me. Now I know why she was a doctor. Like doctor. Yeah, I know what's wrong with you. See, see, we're right there. Um, Lockheed, thank you first of all for being a guest on Facetime with Todd Warden, guys. This is an amazing film. I told you I watched it twice. 
Um, definitely watch this film. It's going to open up your eyes to a lot of subjects that we kind of put aside because everybody wants it to be a beautiful world, but the world is not that beautiful, especially when you see it through the eyes of beautiful people that mm -hmm. go through hardship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's stuff like this that needs to be seen and heard. And mm -hmm. I want to let everybody know, too, that the portion of some of these proceeds you guys are donating to Planned Parenthood, correct? Yes, 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 we are. Yes, we are. Yeah, I think it's a really important cause. It's a cause that I believe in. And, you know, a portion of the profits is definitely going to Planned Parenthood. It's the least that I can do, you know. And uh, I, I, me, as well as my entire team, I would like to actually take this opportunity to thank my whole team. Uh, my uh, music director, Achyut Rajamani. I mean, all the sounds in the beautiful, uh, beautiful world, the song that you heard, everything, he's the one who composed it. Uh, all of my, you know, the initial stages of my sound is finding, you know, the whole crack version of the song and all of that. He was right there kind of helping me out with everything. So it's wonderful being able to work with him. Then my DOP, Abhinandan Ramanujam, who did, I, I think he did a spectacular job with the visuals. You know, everyone's been telling me that. So I'm very grateful for him. Then, of course, my wonderful actors. I mean, exactly. once you watch the, yeah, they are so good. Adit, Naveen, Shreya, Vignesh, you know, and everybody else. Each one of them played their roles to perfection. So you know, I just, I'm sending out a lot of love to all of them and anyone who I haven't actually voiced out yet. You guys mean the world to me. Thank you so much for everything. And, uh, you know, I hope you all watch this interview. This is my way of saying thank you. Oh, they're definitely going to watch <laughs> it. And for those who don't know, Lakshmi, tell people where they can follow you uh, okay. so they can get to know you more and follow your journey as an amazing filmmaker because you're definitely one of the future ones. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I am quite active on social media. Instagram it happens to be my favorite as well. So you can always follow me on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. On Instagram, it's at Lakshmi Devi. On Twitter, it's at Lakshmi Devi NYC. Facebook also, it is uh, actress Lakshmi Devi NYC. Uh, and what else do you have? Then I also do have my website, fideitalkies.com, uh, mm -hmm. where you can see the different projects that my production house has made. And there's a contact sheet there for anyone who actually wants to contact me about work, any sort of production work, script work, anything along those lines. Right. And that's a self-made yeah. production company where you're concentrating yeah. on films that make a difference, correct? Yes, that is correct. Yeah, and I love it. So guys, follow this girl, independent filmmaker, doctor turned filmmaker, <laughs> successful award winning <-building> filmmaker, <laughs> Angling Steven Spielberg, look out, John Tutorial, congratulations <laughs> on linking up with her. I think you got the right idea and you guys are gonna choose something in the future because honestly, look out Oscars because roll out the red carpet because I'm seeing it coming for you guys. So congratulations, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'll speak to you soon. Okay, bye-bye. So, Lakshmi, thank you for being a guest on FaceTime with Todd Warden. It was truly an honor to interview you. The story itself is so powerful. I am so glad you put this out there, put it into the world. So many people need to see this. And the reviews and so many views that this film is getting is amazing. And to be honest with you, I'm not surprised it's that good. Guys, you have to check out this film. Like she said, when the music changes on iTunes, Google Play, YouTube movies, and I guarantee it's gonna start hitting the streaming network soon because that's how good it is. When the music changes, I guarantee you will change your life after you've seen this film. So last week, congratulations. Guys, I hope you like this interview because I'm gonna tell you right now, I love this interview. And I can't wait to have Locks Me back on my show hopefully in my future seasons, because I see Oscars for this young lady, and I can't wait to recap and catch up with her. So until then, like I always say, everyone, you're not living a passionate life in whose life you live. Take care, guys. I'll see you soon. He is the most interesting man in the world. I'm not always on YouTube, but when I am, I make sure I'm subscribed to FaceTime with Todd Warner. Be thirsty, my friends.